Hey people, Mark here, finally appeasing the masses like the shrewd people pleaser I am. And as you already know from the title, we're doing one of the most requested Halo ships I've ever had, the Valiant Class Super Heavy Cruiser. Please subscribe if you want, and I've got another channel in the description that has some new videos planned soon. I currently have a charity running on all of my videos for the ASPCA, an animal welfare organization. Look at the sad dog. He needs money to live, please consider it. One more quick thing, if the editing seems a bit off on this one, that's because this is the first video on this channel to be recorded with DaVinci Resolve instead of Adobe Premiere. I say first on this channel because I've got another that I made that will be going up on my other channel soon, so uh, if you're interested in that, uh, maybe check it out in the description. Oh, also, the new Discord server is also done, so if you're interested in that... Uh, <laughs> the Valiant Class Super Heavy Cruiser, or the Valiant Class Battle Cruiser, is one of the most powerful capital ships in the UNSC. Due to its advanced fleet coordination capabilities and ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most opponents. The largest of the cruisers at 1,518 meters long, the Valiant was a little over half as long as the Epoch Class carrier, and is almost 70% as long as the Orion-class assault carrier. The class was built to be a cross between a battleship and a heavy cruiser. While it has the size of a battleship, it lacks the armor and armament of such a vessel, instead opting for a more versatile role as a flagship in any fleets it would be included in. When it was commissioned in 2493, it had next-generation fusion drives, and was fitted with an advanced flag bridge suite intended to be used by admirals rather than captains. These flag bridges are huge, with two dozen bridge stations for monitoring and directing not just the Valiant's operation, but the operation of every ship in the fleet. Some Valiant's in command roles were outfitted with more armor and replaced much of the space allocated for troops and small craft with specialized equipment, like the probe launchers we see on the Autumn class and umbilicals able to dock couriers, which are these small ships used to transmit faster than light communications. The armament of the Valiant class was not as large as one might expect, in between that of the refit Halcyon class cruiser and the Marathon class cruiser in scope. 250 GE-1A Max. These are, I mean, uh, they're max. 50 M58 Archer missile pods. These are the UNSC's favorite missile pods, and with 50 of them, the Valiant can fire off, I believe, 1,200 missiles in one volley. M66 Sentry Autocannons. These are one of the UNSC's medium-sized naval weapons, larger than what's usually considered a point defense gun, able to tear through hull, but not able to scale with max in terms of firepower, not by a long shot. 50 M910 Rampart point defense guns and an indeterminate amount of M810 Helix point defense guns. These are for shooting down missiles, torpedoes, and strike craft, and this amount is in line with its contemporaries, Marathon class notwithstanding because that thing has a significant point defense deficiency, and finally an indeterminate amount of Shiva class nuclear missiles. I don't think I've ever actually talked about Shivas, which is weird because they're the most commonly used Starship-fired nuclear missile employed by the UNSC. They're guided by either crewmen or AI once fired and can be fitted to longswords for more low-profile deployment. While most Covenant shields and hulk can withstand the force of a nuclear blast from a Shiva, the electromagnetic pulse keeps them viable for use in disrupting enemy systems. Thanks to the occasional Spartan boarding, it's known that the detonation of a Shiva from inside a ship is a different story, amplifying the blast by momentarily containing it with Within the shield, which redirects it back inward. The Valiant was the pet project of the UNSC for a long time, going through years of testing and feasibility studies before the UNSC decided to give it the old college try. The UNSC Valiant, the lead ship, was constructed in 2493, and was successful in the initial testing phase, but the prohibitively high cost and delays in incorporating the highly advanced fusion drives prevented widespread manufacturing. And by 2495, the ships were cut from all Navy roles, and the process of stripping them for parts began. But upon the outbreak of increased civil unrest and the infiltration of the colonial military authority by insurrectionists and their sympathizers, they were reintroduced to augment battle groups, while other command and control vessels like the UNSC carriers were busy with counterinsurgency operations. The Valiant class took part in battles from the very beginning to the very end of the Human Covenant War, with the UNSC Everest, Vice Admiral Preston Cole's flagship, leading Battle Group X-Ray to Harvest in 2526, the first large-scale battle between Human and Covenant. Thirteen human vessels vessels were destroyed by a single Razus pattern interdictor. The Valiant herself was a part of the Epsilon Eridani fleet in 2552, and was present for the fall of Reach. 90% of all ships attached to that fleet were lost, but the Valiant's fate is unknown. The UNSC Terminus is also a known Valiant class, but its activities are also unknown. As for the Everest, Cole made several modifications to the ship's armament and armor, and it served up until 2543, leading Battlegroup India during the Battle of Sai Serpentis. When the Battlegroup jumped into the system, it sent a ripple of energy through it, making auroras sparkle up on nearby planets and causing a visible shift in the eye of Viperidae, a nearby gas giant. This fleet was huge. 
Cole had gotten intel of a Covenant armada amassing in the area, so he put together the largest fleet up until that point, probably only surpassed by home fleet during the Battle of Earth, but we don't have exact numbers there. The fleet consisted of 23 carriers, 13 cruisers, 79 destroyers, 42 frigates, 5 prowlers, and 50 supply refit and rescue ships, and at the center of it all was the UNSC Everest, as well as one fire ship, which Cole ordered specifically. The Covenant fleet detected them immediately. What? But before they could jump to engage, a prowler that was already in the system led the way for India to the Covenant Battle Group. This was necessary as intrasystem slipspace jumps were still very difficult for human ships. and the Prowler would essentially be leaving nav beacons for the ship's AIs to lock onto. They jumped once again into high orbit of Viperidae, and split into two wings to rush the enemy from two sides of the planet. The Covenant forces also divided to face their incoming enemy, but instead of meeting the enemy force head-on, one wing of the UNSC fleet made an emergency orbital burn and blindsided the now divided fleet. Cole lost a third of his fleet in this initial engagement, but the Covenant lost 23 ships, which is far more than the norm for these engagements. This is unheard of during the war. Most of the time, it took three human ships to beat one Covenant one. To have the stats tip this far in humanity's favor is a miracle. While Battlegroup India made another pass at the Covenant fleet, they took considerable damage. Things were looking bad until a fleet of 55 modified merchant vessels, chock full of missiles and small warships of designs that the UNSC and Covenant had never seen, jumped into the system, led by the Bellicose, a stolen Karn class frigate captained by Lyrene Castilla, Preston Cole's ex-wife. The insurrectionist fleet opened fire with Max and Miss missiles and coil guns, the fleets passing through each other and emerging on the other side. The Covenant fleet was now half its original strength. Instead of turning back to continue the fight, however, they continued on their trajectories and the Innies jumped out of the system. They apparently weren't here to save UNSC ships, they were here to hamstring a common enemy. Before Cole could give the order to attack and finish them off, Slip space rupture detected. Slip space rupture detected. Two hundred Covenant vessels materialized. No UNSC weapons were fired. No transmissions made. Until one encrypted broadcast was sent from the Everest to the rest of the fleet. A full-scale retreat. While most of Battlegroup India turned to make its escape, one ship inched closer to Viperidae, the UNSC Everest. The Covenant ships started to make chase after India, but stopped after they received this message from Cole. Listen to me, Covenant. I am Vice Admiral Preston J. Cole, commanding the human flagship Everest. You claim to be the holy and glorious inheritors of our universe? I spit on your so-called holiness. You dare judge us unfit? After I have personally sent more than 300 of your vainglorious ships to hell? After kicking your collective butts off harvest not once, but twice? From where I sit, we are the glorious inheritors. You think otherwise? You can try and prove me wrong. You'd have to be one strong-willed Sangheili to turn down a challenge like that. Over 200 Covenant ships turned and bared down upon Everest some slingshotting around the planet to cut off any possible escape. They unleashed hundreds of plasma beams, followed up with innumerable lasers, digging a honeycomb into the Everest. But no atmosphere left the ship. It had already been vented in preparation for this, and its next move. Is that the best you got? Watch what one unworthy human can do. Cole unloaded everything he had, sending thousands of archer missiles and a dozen Shivas at the enemy ships, but sending another hundred Shivas in the opposite direction. The Archer missiles did obscure their view of Cole, and the 12 Shivas sent forth destroyed the lead Covenant ship, but the true play was the other hundred, which plunged themselves and detonated in the heart of a swirling gas giant. For just a moment, Viperidae graduated from gas giant to brown dwarf star. Gigatons of hydrogen wafted through the vacuum outward, filling the space with plasma, and in an instant, obliterating both Covenant fleets and the Everest, along with Preston Cole and his crew. Or at least, that's the story. It's the personal belief of codename Surgeon, an Oni operative, that Cole survived the battle. After analyzing the footage from the Battle of Psy Serpentis, the AI's Phoenix and Lackluster calculated that there was an 89.7% chance that Cole survived and escaped in an emergency slipspace jump. This is backed up by the fact that before the battle, he consulted with the Super AI network on Reach to calculate the parameters for a jump in conditions identical to those at Viperidae. The appearance and immediate exit of the Bellicose, known to be captained by his ex-wife, supports the possibility 
possibility that Cole planned to make his last stand by technicality alone. It's also stated that the likelihood of a ship-wide desertion by the crew of the Everest is very unlikely, as unlikely as Cole killing all the dissenters. Cole had recently filled the crew with new bodies, possibly those sympathetic to his motives or loyal to him without question. As for the rest of them, it's speculated that Cole would keep them in cryo indefinitely while he and his wife live peacefully away from the war. What a dick. While Cole would be 89 by 2560, the year that Halo Infinite takes place, it's noted that the amount of time in and out of cryo would make him physically around 22 years younger, assisted by Flash-cloned replacement organs. In 2552, it was debated whether he would ever assist humanity again, and proposed that his goal was to create a home for humanity far outside of the UNSC-dominated space. Whether he still lives or succeeded is a mystery, and whether he would ever take up arms to defend humanity again against a new threat is unknown. My initial thoughts on this ship were that it was kind of boring. It doesn't have much personality on its own, and it doesn't do anything as glamorous as the Infinity, and it can't single-handedly destroy an entire fleet, usually. But after rereading the impossible life and possible death of Preston J. Cole, I realized that the ship itself may be a little dull as they go. I mean, it's, it's no halberd. Appreciating the character of Preston Cole does the ship wonders. This is a ship chosen not just by a strategic genius, but an actual one who spends his time in between divorces reading the biographies of ancient generals in something called reunification matrices of Hilbert Fields within spiral unbounded singularities. Which, if that's a real thing, it's way above my pay grade to research. Seriously, I don't get paid enough for that. Please leave a super thanks. And that is the Valiant Class Super Heavy Cruiser. Much less info on that than one might expect from a ship that is so beloved. Based on looks alone, I would have said it's a little boring. When I say it looks a little boring, that's by Halo standards, right? The mention of couriers is very cool. The, the command suite upgrades are very cool. The story has probably the coolest uh, description of strategic capabilities in Halo, I'd say, to this day. Halo has moved on to other avenues of storytelling, but I won't lie, it's been kind of missing that. But if you like this video, you can uh, check out my other channel or the Autumn Class Breakdown, which is, you know, it's a similar ship to this. That one's kind of old, so be nice to it. I've not had much time to record videos and, and edit stuff and write stuff because school has been kicking my ass a little bit. I mean, not grade-wise, I'm doing excellent, actually, but just time-wise. I've got no time to do nothing. But yeah, new video on the other channel. Please check it out. Uh, peace. Bye-bye. Hasta luego.